Off the top of your head, what do you think is the most important thing every video game needs? Really stop and think for a moment. Is it the graphics? How the game is visually presented? And does it do so with a unique style? Is it the sounds? <coughs> Music or performances by actors, if any? The sounds and effects that define how a game feels? Could it be the story, the level of immersion and engagement, and how the game connects with you as a player? I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose... Rapture. Or could it simply be whether or not it's fun to play? Well, whatever you think this thing might be, I want you to write something in the comments, then when this video is over, go back to what you wrote and edit it to tell us if your thoughts have changed, because they just might. But let me play out this reveal a bit longer, because that's fun, right? Mmm. Buttery anticipation. I'll give you a hint and say that no game is worth playing if it doesn't have this. And I know that most people, except a select few, are going to agree. This aspect I'm referring to applies to the really good video games, and even the shittier versions of those good video games. I've read articles and comments that say stuff like, addictiveness is one of the most important aspects of a video game, or the story, the controls, the progression. The most important thing in a video game is chaos? <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? There's so many people clamoring and putting their thoughts out there, some of them are just plain ridiculous and far-fetched, and allowed me to boldly proclaim that all these people and ideas are wrong, wrong, wrong. Well, actually, Actman, who are you to say what other people find most valuable and necessary in every single video game? Don't you think you're going into subjective opinion territory here? I mean, what do you- Shut up, I'm in charge here. Yes, master. Sorry, master. Now you gotta think broad here, everyone, because what matters most in a video game, and you're gonna agree with me when I tell you, is the exact same thing that matters most in every game. I'm talking every sport, every board game, everything from hopscotch to who wants to be a millionaire, to Call of Duty, Halo, League of Legends, Dota, Counter-Strike, this facet is all-encompassing, and yet I haven't seen an article, forum, video, or anything at all that brings this up. Not even the Wikipedia page on video game design mentions it. Only the angry video game nerd brought it up. Now, what's the most important aspect about any game? Well, being able to fucking play it. On the real, this is the most important aspect of a game. But that goes without saying, alright? And I'm talking about something else. But you want to know, don't you? You're anxious to hear what it is, and you're curiously wondering if I'm actually right or if this is just bullshit. Well, the secret about it is, and let me tell you- Hey, Actman! You got a letter! It's from 122nd6373, get to the fucking point street! Alright, 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 we'll, we'll skip the 10 minute drum roll. You ready? The most important thing every video game needs is challenge. Difficulty. I'm honestly surprised people haven't brought this up. I even asked my Twitter followers this question, and only one guy was able to get it right after I dropped a hint or two. So congrats to you, Lore. But just like every goddamn test I've had in elementary, junior high, high school, college, I can't just give the right answer. I gotta explain my thinking and show my work. Well, at a basic fundamental human nature level, don't worry, we won't get too meta, people just like accomplishing things. Everyone wants to have that feeling of success. Oh my god! Oh! Oh my fucking god! This is why we have the Olympics, professional sports, the World Cup. This is why people speedrun games. This is why we've seen ridiculous accomplishments under the most bizarre of circumstances, like beating Dark Souls with a Guitar Hero controller, playing Winston by connecting bananas to the various button inputs. Like, are you serious? Executing an impossibly complex glitch. All this is done to chase the dragon of challenge. 
The best part about a battle is its raw challenge. Its raw challenge, huh? I kind of like the way that sounds. More importantly, people like to show off their nice things or what they've spent their time doing. This is why we hand out trophies, medals, ribbons. You know, we play games for fun, but we also want something to show for that afterwards. I mean, that's why I conveniently included this shot of all the trophies on my bookshelf. Just look at how important this makes me. Think about the Xbox 360 and when achievements came out. After that, Steam and PlayStation came out with achievements too. Hell, even a huge as fuck YouTube channel came out because of that, and thousands of tip videos as well. Why? Because achievements are challenges, goals that you can look at and chase, and you get that giddy little excited bubbly feeling when you see it pop up on the screen. If a game is too easy or doesn't present an adequate challenge, oftentimes that accomplishment of beating it can mean little more than an extra 75 points for your gamer score. I really only speak for myself in this, but I can play a game that doesn't have the best graphics, I can play a game or a section that has bad controls, something that's old as shit, but I cannot, cannot play a game that doesn't challenge me. That's what I need above all else. Now what happens when a game doesn't provide a difficult challenge? It becomes unplayable. Although, there are a few exceptions to this, more than I'll say here, but here's one. When I replay the Phoenix Wright games, I have a pretty good idea of what evidence to present and when, as that game can easily be conquered after beating it through sheer memory. Normally when you can breeze through a game the second time around, it doesn't constitute much replay value, but the story of these games is so fucking good, it's worth it to experience again and again. So when I first got Diablo 3 at its launch, I was so freaking hyped to play it because the first two games could be brutally difficult, which is a part of what made the demonic setting and monsters so intimidating and fun to fight. Well, when I popped this piece of shit into my computer, I had played for about 12 hours, hadn't used a single health potion, I had maybe 40 at the time, and at that point, I alt-tabbed out and was googling how to make Diablo 3 harder. And what I found was you had to beat this retardedly easy, mind-numbing game in order to unlock a difficulty setting that wasn't made for four-year-olds. And that's when I just stopped playing, because I discovered Diablo 3 offered me no challenge. And the idea that I would have to force myself to play through this boring slog of a game killed all ambition I had of playing it after that. It's also important to note that Diablo 3 is one of many games that try to provide this illusion of challenge, where there's something that feels like it's supposed to be tough or a big accomplishment when it's really not. For example, there's a section in Resident Evil 5 where you fight an El Gigante. Es muy aterrador. A giant deformed monster that made for an epic and intensely difficult boss in Resident Evil 4. Only this time, instead of dodging and carefully positioning yourself, you're in a stupid fucking on-rails section where you just point the crosshair at it and hold right trigger. Oh man, my hands are getting tired. I don't know if I can hold the right trigger for five more minutes. I think this illusion of challenge is why some people can actually play games like Diablo 3, because even though it's not difficult in the slightest, and beating the game is as simple as just clicking everything with no sense of strategy or thought, the game can sort of fake that challenge, or fake that feeling of accomplishment. Another game that became unplayable for me was Borderlands 2. Now don't get me wrong, Borderlands 2 is a great fucking game, but this is the problem here. I had made it my goal to do every side quest and every main quest, because I loved the first game so much. And I got to a point where I had severely outleveled all of my current missions. I was far too powerful for the rest of the game to offer any challenge, and that's why I stopped playing. Then there was Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, a follow-up to one of the most creative and fun games ever. But when I got to the second big main boss, on my first attempt I was able to beat it without even getting close to taking damage. The boss was slow, predictable, and I didn't feel any accomplishment after beating it. Once I realized Dark Moon was far too easy, I stopped playing it. Now you know the Scarab Gun in Halo 2? And how it just obliterates everything at a whim? Well stuff like this can be really damn fun to use in the right setting. Halo 2 is one of the most butt-fucking difficult games you will ever play, so be able to conquer that difficulty using the most absurd and overpowered weapon is just such an incredible feeling. And some games do this, where they give you a moment of invulnerability or supreme overpoweredness, 
The Metroid games are notable for giving you all your powers at the start, but then taking them away. Now the thing is, those moments of sheer overpoweredness wouldn't feel satisfying if the game itself wasn't challenging. Right? With the Scarab Gun, that feeling just wouldn't exist if you didn't have to do a very complicated exploit to get it. Nor would the game be fun if every weapon you used was a Scarab Gun, or for the entirety of the game, you were this overpowered beast. But what exactly is that balance, that perfect difficulty that doesn't border on easy as breathing or nearly impossible? Well, that's the real trick of it, and fighting that balance is what separates a fun game from an addicting game. For instance, boss battles, a staple of video games. A great boss is a combination of interesting mechanics, a sense of scale, intimidation, and pure difficulty. But most importantly, it's about testing what you've learned up to that point. How do you handle the game mechanics and how do you use them to your advantage? Banjo-Tooie will have a boss in every world, and often you gotta utilize whatever new moves you learned in order to beat it. And in this case, it leads up to the incredibly satisfying final boss, where you'll have to pull out everything from your bag of tricks in order to beat it. Not to mention the game offers a trivia mode testing your knowledge of the game up to that point. Now that's real creative, because if something is difficult but isn't fun, it also isn't really worth playing. Arcadia City on Legendary from Halo Wars comes to mind, where unless you are able to perfectly manage your troops in four separate locations, you are gonna lose. The slightest mistake on this mission will force you to restart. And that's not a good balance when it comes to challenge and difficulty. So like, the bosses in the original Luigi's Mansion might seem easy to someone who's beaten the game before, but I guarantee you that doesn't make it easy to get a gold plate on every last one of those bastards. You might be able to beat Luigi's Mansion without dying once, but to get a perfect score on every single boss, that's something that's hard. The reason people love the Souls game so much is because the bosses can really freak you out and kick your ass, but they're never unbeatable. The game gives the feeling of an insurmountable challenge at first. You're this weak as hell, piece of shit, undead, but through perseverance you can come out on top. There's so many unique ways of offering a fun, yet fair challenge to players. And notice I said fair, because there are so many games that add artificial difficulty, which can sometimes be more aggravating than when a game is too easy. Artificial difficulty is shallow, provides a challenge that isn't satisfying or enjoyable, and often just feels cheap and unfair. To contrast this, there is what is known as design difficulty, which is exactly what it sounds. Things like puzzles or the way levels are made. Design difficulty is meant to challenge the player's skill and their thoughts in order to overcome the obstacles presented, more so than it is a test of patience and just sheer grinding. Banjo-Tooie and DK64 will require you to solve some type of puzzle in order to attack the boss. Jackal snipers are the perfect example of artificial difficulty, because it's not so much about forcing you to think or giving you a tough foe that you have to outmaneuver. Jackal snipers are simply about memorizing their location and how many of them there are. An enemy that looks at you for one second and you're dead. If you play through Halo 2 on Legendary, there is absolutely no way you aren't going to die to these bastards at least 15 times. Because this is just a way for the game to force you to replay the same sections. But now compare this to something like Cuphead, a game that's taken the world by storm, where the bosses are visually interesting with different phases. Even if you die a bunch, it's still satisfying to know you beat the first couple phases and you're eager to try again to see what the game throws at you, what's next on the horizon. Because Cuphead is a game that is designed to offer shorter yet more challenging experiences. And here's another thing to note, which is progressive difficulty. You know, most games will start off easy with some kind of tutorial that will teach you the basics. And the original Mario games are a great example of this, as well as the original Halo. For instance, in the first level, you only fight elites and grunts. Then in the second level, they introduce the Needler, the Jackals. In the third level, they introduce Hunters and Sword Elites. You get the idea. Same thing with the original Mario. It's a difficulty that ramps up in challenge as you get farther into it and as you get better, which makes the overall final levels much more satisfying because that difficulty has been built up over a period of time. Now another thing to note is plenty of games offer different settings and customizable difficulty. 
Skulls in Halo 3 were a great addition because if you ever felt the game too easy, why not experiment with a few of the settings to shake up your playstyle? Another great example is the Tales of series, which is one of my personal favorites when it comes to difficulty. You can usually pick three options at the start, but after you beat it the first time, you're able to tweak the settings using Grade, a currency you earn throughout the game. So you could make enemies tougher, but also increase your overall experience so you get more abilities to use on. Just look at how many options there are to tweak the second playthrough of this game. And this brings up an essential factor in a game's worth, replayability. The best games are those that design for the inevitable fact that players will want to go through it more than once. You know, that guy that brought up chaos wasn't too far from the truth. It's thrilling to not know what's coming around the next corner, to try your best to be prepared for it. On the second playthrough, things might change, or enemies might have increased health and defense, or specializations. This is why the Souls series offers New Game Plus, because games that account for this replayability factor will take into account that having beat the game, you're good enough to beat it again. And thus, if you were to start the game over with just the same difficulty settings, you could probably just breeze right through it. Which is why Diablo 1 and 2 were challenging and so replayable. They had auto-generated maps, which made exploring through the worlds and dungeons a little bit different each time. Enemies might be in a different spot or you'd get a different quest than your other playthrough. So many factors that would change. But here's another interesting point. I consider Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door to be one of the most perfect games ever made. However, there's one thing that holds it back, and that's difficulty. The first couple times you play through it, it's a, it's a good challenge, don't get me wrong. It'll really keep you on your toes. But here's the issue. I've played the game so many times that I have to personally handicap myself in order to make the game difficult. I have to equip a badge that makes me take double damage so that I can play the game with a challenge. And that is a saving grace for the Thousand Year Doors replay value, but certain games really do need a sort of expert mode, you know? Now occasionally, and this mostly applies to RPGs, they will have a sort of real final boss. Not the one you fought at the end of the game, it's usually something that's really hard to get to, to figure out, perhaps you gotta do a series of quests, but it's much more challenging than the actual final boss at the end of the game. And that's a really nice touch to add yet another thing to achieve even after you beat a game. There are some games that only have one difficulty setting, and that's so you know that you're playing it the way it's meant to be played. Most of the time, the difficulty is just right, but this can be risky, as if it's not challenging enough, then again, it's not really worth playing. And other games offer a few choices for difficulty. Some of them can make the game absurdly hard, but hey, just having the option to change and tweak the way you wanna play can really make the game accessible to a lot more people. Occasionally, there are video games with huge spikes from one difficulty to the next. Warcraft 3's normal is a decent challenge. Then when you move on to hard, it's like fucking hardcore mode micromanaging. <laughs> then there's that group of people, mostly game journalists, you know, the ones that should have picked different careers, that constantly complain about games being too difficult. Games need to skip this boss button. They need to have a baby mode so that uncoordinated toddlers like myself can play it. On the real, there is usually some merit to complaints about a game being too difficult. Like for instance, the Capra Demon fight in Dark Souls 1. First time fighting this guy, you'll have about two seconds to take in your surroundings before you get fucked in the ass. I mean, while Dark Souls is a fantastic game, I have a problem with this boss because it's almost guaranteed that the average player going in blind is going to die a few times. For comparison, look at the Tauros Demon fight. It's similar because you're in a narrow space, but the difference is the first time you fight this guy, you see him off in the distance drop down. You get a chance to plan your strategy and move around. You get time to anticipate this big demon coming towards you. This is important for games with boss battles, that they don't just fuck you in the ass the moment you get into one. Most of the time, the games they talk about really aren't too hard. You just have to adapt. The old motto, get good, really does apply here. But it's also very important to understand that some games aren't created for everyone. Actually, no game is made for everyone because then it's made for no one. 
certain demographics of players will be pleased by the difficulty in one game and others won't be. So really it is up to the player's choice in what sort of challenge and difficulty they're looking for. I mean, people absolutely love the Civilization games, however for me, the difficulty lies in simply understanding what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. I can't even get past the tutorial in these games. So I know they aren't for me, but I'm not gonna bash the difficulty in them if that's what you like. I said a while back that most people would agree with me on the statement that challenge and difficulty is the most important thing every video game needs, but that a select few were going to disagree. Yeah, I was talking about the hackers, the cheaters, specifically in multiplayer games. I mean, take a look at this, a highlight clip from a COD World War II game. Now this dude is obviously hacking, everyone can see that, so these four kills mean jack shit. And not just that, everyone who looks at this is gonna think, wow, that guy is a piece of shit. Because seriously, what's the fun in that? What's the fun in knowing you're gonna win? I don't find enjoyment in cheating, especially against other players. But I do know why people cheat like this. Because the game, as it's supposed to be played, is offering you the challenge of playing against other real people. And from match to match, it's incredibly difficult to anticipate how other players are going to play. So people who hack, are falsely chasing that accomplishment I was talking about. Even though it's scummy, the important thing to remember is hackers are still chasing that dragon of challenge. Again, I'm trying to emphasize the importance here. Just because difficulty is the most important factor in a game, that doesn't mean the more there is, the better. The too much of a good thing rule applies to everything but Cheez-Its and cocaine, all right? It really is a delicate balancing act. But when it's perfected, that's what makes a video game addicting and fun as hell and gives it immense replay value. Now I think I've covered just about every angle of this, but I would like to share this link to video game difficulty tropes. It actually highlights all the different forms of challenge in video games, and I suggest taking a look at it if you're more curious on the subject. But you know, it all boils down to that sense of pride and accomplishment. That satisfactory feeling can come in low and high volumes. Whether it be winning a Mario Party minigame, or successfully beating Dark Souls without taking a hit. You know, that's really why we play games. To overcome a challenge and have fun while doing it. To sharpen our memory, our reflexes. I don't mean to imply that graphics, sound, music, writing, story, cinematics, or fun factor are not important features. They really, truly are. When you get to the core of what all games are about, it really comes back to the challenge and feeling accomplished at the end of it all because you want all the time you spent playing to show for something. And that is why difficulty and challenge is the most important thing every video game needs.